Hello and welcome back and today I want to discuss a subject that you guys have contacted me about several times since the first time I did my hardware review of this. This is the Synology DS220 Plus. Now you've already seen the title of this video so it's a bit weird if you don't know what it's about already but I'll indulge you. Um, so ever since I did the hardware review of this as well as we did the uncoverings of that Synology PDF leak a few weeks ago we started talking about the memory available on these devices. And just like its predecessors before it, the DS220 Plus um, recommends that you only utilize Synology's own memory. That is their own brand of memory. And they have had their own modules of memory. This de device here takes advantage of DDR4, uh, a 2,666 megahertz memory inside. And it arrives with 2 gig by default that can be upgraded up to 6 gig by installing a 4 gig official module here from them to upgrade it via the one available PCI slot inside to upgrade it. You know, which is all fair and well. 6 gig isn't a terrible amount of memory, is it? But... Still, nevertheless, it's worth highlighting that a number of you wanted to look at ways in which you could expand that memory. I think it would be remiss to not even suggest that is not a thing in the previous generation. We did notice a lot of the time that a lot of the 2018 series of devices, the 918, the 218, the 718, a lot of you wanted to exceed that memory. And they arrived with 8 gig in the case of the 4 bays as the maximum memory and, four, and 6 gig of memory in those 2 bays. Now, Synology have been very, very clear about their feelings about unofficial memory. If you use unofficial uh, memory from companies like Crucial or Kingston and you install that memory inside your device, you are almost certainly invalidating your warranty as well as putting your data in danger. They have been very clear about that and again, I'm not one to argue with them or you on that. I think there are advantages for both of them, but there's also the stability of your data is a very real concern. However, that doesn't mean that a number of you aren't still going to try. You're still going to try to stick larger memory inside this, despite the fact the CPU is rated for no more than 8 gig, even though its predecessor was rated for no more than 8 gig. A lot of time, this channel as well, we did tests where we installed uh, two 8 gig models uh, modules in the 918. So, this long rambling intro will draw to a close. What I'm saying is, today's video, along with the one afterwards, uh, that's going to be featuring 16 gig crucial sodium 2666 MHz memory on DDR4, and the video afterwards where we're going to look at 32 gig. I'm running these tests for two reasons. Number one, I'm doing this test so that you guys don't have to. And I don't know whether this is going to work. This is still the same device we've been using for our software overviews. This is the one we got from Japan there. And it's the one that we're going to install this brand new memory into. So I'm doing that so you don't have to do it to see if it will work. The second reason I'm doing it is to look at the results, what it does and if it changes things. Because we have done tests in the past where we've put unofficial memory sticks inside a Synology and the memory monitor within the resource monitor has not looked great and there's definitely been the odd hiccup there in the background and moreover there's been a number of you that have reported to Synology that when you've used unofficial memory there have been problems and that's the reason for this enormous disclaimer at the beginning and I'm sure a dozen of you have already put in the comments oh too many disclaimers someone's afraid of getting sued and I you know all I want to do is make sure you don't lose your data so with that in mind Let's go ahead and upgrade this memory to see if it'll take it. As mentioned, this is part one of a two-part series of videos. Uh, and in this video, we're going to look at the 16 gig module. Now, an official Synology memory goes, this one, I can say with local tax, it looks at, uh, like it's going to be at 80 to 90 pounds, including your local tax, which is quite a lot of money for a four gigabyte module. Now, if you look at the crucial memory, they start off at about, for 8 gig, £40. That's including VAT and your local tax or wherever you are in the world. And that goes all the way up to uh, £170 for the 32 gig module and around £70 for this 16 gig module. So there's lots of reasons of economy why you might do this. Now, the memory itself is very, very similar. And again, we won't go through a lot of this in the second video. I'm gonna save all of the comparison for here. I have already unboxed this. Um, inside, we have got our Synology 4 gig module there on screen. Standard one, we've got one row of chips there on the front. 
each one of those little stacks of cells is representative of uh, one gig of storage. And if we open up the 16 gig of crucial memory, let's get that pop open. Sorry about my proximity to the mic. There's been a lot of moving around for the Plex tests recently. Um, and if we have a look at the crucial memory, this is a crucial 16 gig. So as you see there, with this memory here on screen, you've got the Synology memory there, and you've got the crucial memory there. And that's one that's got 16 different cells there. Each one of them, it's eight on one side, eight on the other, and each one of those is representative of one gigabyte of DDR4 memory. So they're very similar. They're both so dim, and they're both 2,666 megahertz. Neither one of them is ECC memory. They're both standard memory there. So we will now install this crucial memory. And it's quite straightforward. Remove the front panel there. Remove your bays. Try to keep track of which bays are which. It's not the end of the world because things like SHR will work out which bay is what, but I still wouldn't risk it. And I'd make sure you remember bay one, bay two, what the bays are you're removing if you attempt to do this. But remember the whole point of this video is so you don't have to. So there is the crucial memory. Inside there, you can see the memory bay there just behind the LEDs. And before I go any further, it is also worth highlighting there is a second memory bay in here, but first and foremost, you have to pretty much strip this whole device down to its component parts in order to get to the second memory module behind this metal panel. Secondly, you're not only invalidating your warranty in a big, big way doing that, but also there's no guarantee it's gonna work and chances are you're also going to potentially brick your system if you do it wrong, both by accidentally scratching the circuit board or messing around to a point where the OS is just not gonna function. So I am not recommending right now to go ahead with that panel because I do think that's a step too far for a lot of users. So I'm gonna get this memory module in here. And again, there's the bay there. I am gonna need both hands to do this. Um, make sure you're, it's labeled first. I'm gonna slide that in there, put that into the bay, press it down and you hear that click there? That click means the memory module has now been installed. So I've installed our brand new uh, crucial memory module. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put these drives back in, reconnect the power, reconnect the LAN connection and get this device up and running. Now, again, I know I keep throwing disclaimers at you guys and I know it's irritating, but do not try this unless you are fully prepared to accept the possibility that you're about to invalidate your warranty and potentially brick your system. So if you're going to do this, know the risks, know why you're doing it and whether it's worth the economy and the money you're saving. I'm doing this so you don't have to and I will stop saying that. The other thing to bear in mind here with this system is I've already set up DSM on this. I've done the latest version of DSM. I installed a bunch of apps already and I've had the device running for something like three days to five days solidly. So this device has already been on for a long amount of time and running. If you're going to do something like this, and I recommend this, even if you're installing official memory, make sure you've installed the software first. I recommend that you install the software with the base model and then Get the latest firmware update, power the device down, then install your memory and then re uh, and repower the device. Don't try to do it from a default build. There's no real reason against it, other than the fact that the flash model in module inside may be preset to the original uh, configuration and maybe it's been tested before you've used it, you know, for quality control and stuff like that, or maybe you've purchased it on eBay or something. So always make sure you have got the default OS up and running in its existing state on the baseline model. Then power down, install your memory. But I'm going to start connecting this device up and get this device booted and show you guys what exactly you will see when installing this memory on DSM. Let's flick over to the screen. Right, so we've rebooted our DS220 Plus and I've searched the local area network. I'm going to research it now just to show you guys what it looks like. I've not logged into this device yet. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of pop up just as I go into it. But this is the DS220 Plus here at the bottom. You can ignore that top now as we're preparing for another video coming very, very soon. And for now, we're just going to double click the 220 Plus and log into this NAS. Now, this is a device that was working fine before, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. 
if we've got any conflictions there should already be a whole pile of different options built into the device in terms of applications that i've been utilizing and if we go into the resource monitor this will be our first indication of whether we can see this memory so the overview doesn't give us a vast amount to be going on with here it is highlighting the memory utilization is quite low at the moment if we go into the memory options we can see down here and it has recognized that stick at the very least it has seen that 16 gig module that's paired with the internal 2 gig but what i will say straight off the bat is graphically it's not a smooth run we've got a few little bits and bobs here that are just not clear and this is certainly not what it looked like before if we log in to the other synology nas on my local area network and we'll log into that test nas and i'll give you some idea about how these two compare now the other nas i'm logging into here in the background is uh, the ds1019 and this ds1019 arrives with eight gig of memory so if i go into the resource monitor on this one i'll show you what the memory looks like and if we look here this is what uh, it looks like traditionally and this is what it looks like on the unit we're using right now with the unofficial memory now that's already not a great sign the little line at the top isn't the end of the world because you do have that line but there's definitely issues there in the background where the limitations of the software where you know the device is obviously being geared towards memory only being up to a certain acceptable level are not being presented if we flip between the options it's still not really working correctly we can have a look and see if that memory could be allocated in other applications such as surveillance station uh, not surveillance station what am i saying we want to go for virtual machine manager same goes we're going to do the same thing on this baseline model and we're going to have a look there and there's our virtual machine manager wizard it's just going to sort that out and open it all up to show that we've not done this setup before we're going to go ahead go in there open that and virtual machine manager we'll do the same thing on here just to see if it does allocate it unfortunately we can't apparently because we're not using a btrfs volume uh, so unfortunately there won't be any comparison with this device on this part of the video but already i'm not bowled over by that resource monitor there and again i know this is a tiny detail but still one a lot of you may wish to take heed of because i know a lot of you have done the upgrades on these devices and it it doesn't always end badly of course it doesn't a lot of the time there's a lot of good stuff that comes out of it now if we look into the back end of the device we can have a little look about any of the other options that may relate to our system we can have a look at the notifications menu see if there's anything there uh, in terms of alerts there's not really anything there we've got that external drive we use but that's about it and again let's get the virtual machine manager i think that's up and running and we'll have a look and see if it's possible to create a virtual machine and allocate some of that storage i'm going to go to create um there we go it's saying the cluster's not quite ready yet still building the cluster there in the back and i'm just going to fast forward to the completion of that cluster actually it looks like it's done so let's have a look let's create that uh let's go for a windows um, area for our vm we're not actually going to fully install a vm for this video but memory we can scroll all the way up to that 18, 18 gig within the virtual machine manager i'm still kind of um dubious if i'm honest but let's proceed forward i'm just going to have a look at some of the hardware options in the background if we look into the info center we can see that once again it has recognized that 18 gig of physical memory inside this synology nas and there's no alerts there and if we do make our way into surveillance station we should be able to monitor if the memory is accessible from that port of call as well i mean if you've got multiple cameras in your surveillance setup then chances are that you're going to need a good amount of memory to make sure that's up and running if we look down the bottom there we can see that we've still got that real low memory utilization there at seven percent uh, but if we go into the system let's see if we've identified the memory we can look at the information and yes once again we have got that 18 gig of memory visible by the system and we can pre-allocate that amount of system memory now once again the cpu inside this device the j4025 is only officially supportive of eight gigabytes of memory and that could well be a barrier for a number of users out there i mean the device has booted there's no denying that and i'm not going to say this has been a flawless setup of that memory 
given the way that chart was being a little bit disruptive there in its overall um, performance there. But overall, I would say that this system does seemingly accept that memory. But what it's going to do long term and the fact that a lot of these graphics are not working is something that I think is a real concern. And if you are going to be utilizing a NAS device and you're going to be heavily reliant on both the Synology license and the Synology software, this might be enough of a reason. I can certainly see the temptation why a number of you would go for enhanced memory and in installing crucial memory inside your Synology NAS is. And I won't, you know, I can't lie to you. I have done that myself in the past. But more and more, we are seeing Synology kind of crack down on this stuff. And I think the software glitch here is enough of a concern to at least give you slight pause for thought. But we will be doing further testing in our next video with the larger generation of memory, that 32 gig SSD and um, uh, DDR4 memory module, I should say, in sodium. And of course, maybe, maybe one day we will try to look into that second memory bay. Personally, I'm not sure it's worth it in the long run, but if you guys keep asking, I'll do it for you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Do click like if you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more and check out the article in the description. Otherwise, I will see you next time.